Mr. Cola, I was informed early this morning of the death of former colleague and friend Dr. Gareth Fitzgerald. As Taoiseach and as leader of Fine Gael, I extend our sympathy uh, to his children, John, Mark, Mary, and to his extended family. Gareth Fitzgerald was a truly remarkable man who made a truly remarkable contribution to Ireland. As Taoiseach, Minister, and leader of Fine Gael, Gareth Fitzgerald made an unparalleled contribution to public life in Ireland. His uh, towering intellect, his enthusiasm for life, and his optimism for politics will be missed by everybody, but particularly by those uh, people in the Fine Gael party. Gareth was a true patriot, an icon of decency and high honour in public life, whose fluency in economics was balanced by the humility, the generosity, and the warmth of his personal and his family life. A leading academic, Gareth Fitzgerald turned his back on private wealth to have instead not just a career, but a lifetime commitment to public life and to politics in this country. His commitment to achieving peace and reconciliation on this island and between Ireland and Britain reached its fruition this very week on the visit of Queen Elizabeth to Ireland. I know that he had hoped to be present in Dublin Castle yesterday evening, but his illness prevented him from doing so. He had a deep understanding, Cancola, of Ireland's capacity to influence international affairs through cooperation and partnership. And he was particularly and passionately committed to developing his country's role in the European Union, of which he was an avowed supporter over very, very many years. His contribution through his column in the Irish Times for over 50 years speaks for itself in respect of the spectrum and the breadth and the quality of the analysis of affairs in uh, Irish uh, current, um, current and political um, happenings. If there is any consolation, it's that his leave-taking was as gentle as his life and the way he lived it. I knew uh, Garrett since the mid-60s as a young lad myself. Speaking from this chair, in this seat, as Taoiseach, he set out his stall for his vision of the equality of recognition of communities in the country. I know the members will join with me in expressing our sympathy and the sympathy of the House to his family, to uh, Mark and Mary and John, uh, the, their children and his grandchildren, and their extended family on the passing of a truly remarkable man. The House of Kiancola will have an opportunity uh, subsequent to the funeral to have more formal statements. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I'd like to call on, on Minister. Uh, Count Corla, uh, it was with great sadness that I learned this morning of the death of Dr. Gareth Fitzgerald. And on behalf of the Labour Party, I want to join with the Taoiseach uh, in expressing our sympathies uh, with uh, uh, John and Mark and Mary and uh, their families. In the many tributes that will be paid today, will be listed the offices of state uh, that Gareth Fitzgerald held in a long and distinguished career. Senator, Deputy Minister, Chancellor of the National University of Ireland, and twice holder of the Office of Taoiseach. Yet even this list does not do justice to what Dr Fitzgerald became. Quite simply, a shining model of citizenship, of service to the nation, of devotion to the ideals of the Republic, and to the foundations on which it stands. Over many decades and in many roles, he relished the role described by his pseudonym used during his first connection with the Irish Times, analyst. He was a man driven to understand, to confront problems with evidence, to weigh facts and to reach conclusions. His association with the Irish Times lasted from the 1940s to the present day. His facility with numbers was legendary. His interests were incredibly broad. From the pattern of the use of the Irish language in the 19th century Ireland to the minute detail of election results and local authority elections in the present decade to the intricacies of public finance. He brought to all these problems the same clarity of thought, the same probing intelligence. 
But analysis was never enough. His enormous sense of duty, of service to the Republic, compelled him to turn analysis into action. He sought and was elected to public office to turn ideas into policy and policy into action. The problems of economics, however, were only one of his many concerns. He was, from his earliest days in public life, determined to address the festering sword that was then Anglo-Irish relations and the deeply troubled relationship between the two traditions on this island. From his book Towards a New Ireland to his role in negotiating the Anglo-Irish Agreement, he showed unequalled qualities of foresight and statesmanship. At the historic gathering last night in Dublin Castle, when the heads of state of these two islands met in friendship and unity, his absence was palpable, for it was he more than any other who was the intellectual and political father of the road that we have travelled together. Among his many roles, Dr Fitzgerald was an outstanding Minister for Foreign Affairs. During his time in that office, he helped to define the scope and nature of Ireland's engagement with the European Union. He was an architect of our national commitment to exercise national sovereignty in a meaningful way by pooling it with other member states. He was quite obviously in his element, having been a committed member of the Irish European movement from its foundation. As leader of the Labour Party, I am too conscious of the strong relationship that members of my party had with him when he led two coalition governments, governments that, though faced with deep economic difficulties, were radical and transformative. Gareth Fitzgerald stood in the eyes of the nation for integrity, for service, for a liberal and tolerant Ireland, for reconciliation between the two traditions on this island. Uh, on this day, it too, it is right to remember with fondness his wife Joan, to whom he was so clearly devoted and who enjoyed the affectionate regard of the Irish people. The public man was a devoted father, grandfather and great-grandfather, and however great our loss, we must think of the loss of, to his family. A great citizen of our Republic is lost to us. A flame is dimmed, but the example that he offered us, the ideals that he lived by, continue to serve us today. Thank you. Understood. Uh, Deputy Michal, Mark. Good morning, Mr. Kian Corwin. The Queen of North got Caillac Gareth Fitzgerald in of Anvron or him got Parsonta. Palatoir, Farleen, August Irishordan, Chetsko, Avion. We shan't come into a le Quinchap. The sheriff is she probably. Ag strastul she gustuma ag skuniul er fobl na herden. Ti si me lehega e gano hi atraka ag s Europa ka ag s higshe taht na Europa marales tahi na tirisha. Wini she anach ed ibra kan fiber na tushkart na herden a retoch ag s kan na tradition ag s probl i exula an a hort le kelim. I'm deeply saddened uh, by the death of uh, Dr. Gareth uh, Fitzgerald. It is clear that Gareth Fitzgerald has made uh, an enormous contribution to Irish politics and to wider society. He has served Irish people with great intelligence, decency and commitment in a lifetime devoted to public service. He was an extremely hard-working politician of compassion and ability. He was a prolific journalist of insight and understanding. He was a brilliant academic of versatility and knowledge. Gareth Fitzgerald, of course, came from a political family. His parents had both been involved in the War of Independence, and Gareth's father, uh, the late Desmond Fitzgerald, of course, served as a minister in the first Irish Free State Government. From his parents, Gar Gareth learned about the value of public service. And it was a lesson that he never forgot. His entire career, indeed his life and times, have been devoted to an overarching commitment to public service. He is someone who has worked night and day for the betterment of our people. Gareth Fitzgerald was defined by his enormous interest and sincere interest in public affairs. As a politician, a commentator or an academic, he was always open and generous with his time. Unlike many intellectuals, he also had the gift of listening. Uh, he was often right, but he was never obsessed with his own views. He always made an effort to listen to others, and he was tolerant of those he did not agree with, so long as they pursue their goals or objectives in, or, in an orderly and peaceful manner. In his autobiography, he tells the story of how he was known as the child of reconciliation. As I've mentioned, his father had taken the Free State side in the Civil War, but Garrett's godparents were Sean and Margaret McEntee, both prominent Republicans, 
and Sean McEntee, of course, was a founder of Fianna Fáil. That lack of bitterness, unusual for its time, had an impact on Gareth Fitzgerald, and he had a great respect for political opponents. Can I say on a personal level that as a young student in UCC from the late 70s on, I developed a huge interest in politics, and I first canvassed in elections where Charles Haughey and Gareth went head to head. These were titanic election battles, and for those who remember them or indeed were involved in them, we will always recall Garrett as an iconic figure in Irish politics and as a politician that you could not but help respect and admire. Gareth Fitzgerald, as we know, served for two terms as Taoiseach in the 1980s during very difficult economic times. And he started his career in politics in Shannon Irn in 1965, which in the context of current debate we might reflect on. And of course, he was a TD for Dublin South East from 1969 uh, to 1992, an extraordinary vote getter in that respect. He topped the poll in his first election to the Doyle and would do so in every other election up until and including 1987. He was an immense political organiser. He took over Fine Gael within the party uh, when it was at a very low ebb. And he built up Fine Gael again, restructuring and growing his organisation and breathing new vitality and energy uh, into his party. And he took it to 70 seats in November 1982, which at that time was an unprecedented level of support for the party. That, by any standards, was an immense political achievement from an outstanding politician of his generation. As Taoiseach and prior to that as Minister for Foreign Affairs, Gareth Fitzgerald was a strong advocate of peace in Northern Ireland. And the resolutions of its problems was a lifetime passion for him, inside or outside of politics. He did what he could uh, to foster reconciliation. And he was an implacable opponent of those who espoused violence as a means to a lasting political solution on this island. And he worked sincerely towards building an Ireland free of conflict. He has the distinction of having been intimately involved in both the Sunningdale and Anglo-Irish agreements. The child of reconciliation, as he was labelled in the aftermath of the Civil War, had become a politician who made an immense and lasting contribution to peace and reconciliation on this island. He passionately opposed sectarianism, and opening his autobiography with the story where as an innocent child of four or five, he made a derogatory remark about the religion of his father's colleague, Ernest Blythe. Uh, Garrett was surprised to hear his mother reply that she too um, was a Protestant. And that lesson also stayed with him, and in his career he worked assiduously to heal the wounds on this island and to bring Catholic, Protestant and dissenter together. And in this respect, he was a pluralist Republican and a patriot. He was, as we know, a strong supporter of the European Union, and he was passionate about the benefits the European Union could bring to this country. And even in recent years, he, he, though he had long stepped out of the arena of party politics, Garrett took to the campaign trail with vigour and determination to help ensure the passing of EU referenda. I remember canvassing with him in Cork during the second Nice referendum, and his knowledge of the issues was still infallible and immense. He also brought to campaigning an enthusiasm that was infectious and an energy that left this younger man finding it hard to keep, up, keep it up. I want to recall here also his very strong and visionary speech on his final days as Taoiseach in 1987. Uh, and following uh, the election of Charles Hawhey to the Doyle, he made, uh, quickly came to his feet and extended his congratulations. And he said some inspired words that still have relevance to us and our times. And that speech uh, is on the record and related to the economic and budgetary measures that the incoming government would have to take. And he offered his support for any legislative action required by that government to implement the appropriate and necessary budgetary provisions. And those words, in essence, sowed the seeds of the, for the then TALA strategy uh, that was important and made a very important contribution to Ireland getting beyond our last big financial crisis. Uh, he perhaps did not receive the credit he deserved for this and for moving beyond the logjam of adversarial politics. His words were generous and were those of a politician who put country before politics. It's this type of sentiment that we should all reflect on today, and we need this kind of thinking if Ireland is to surmount today's challenges. Though my party did not always necessarily agree with Garrett on every political issue, I greatly admired his integrity, his abilities, and his unfailing politeness and courtesy. He was a person who cared deeply about Ireland 
and he has given distinguished and patriotic service to our people. And I wish to extend my deepest sympathies uh, and those of the Fianna Fáil party uh, to his family, to John, Mark and Mary, and to his friends within the Fine Gael party. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy. Call on Deputy Gerry Adams. Gorod Magarald Ogus, Hion Fenegale, Esko Haraha, and Tishok. Be Rolmor Aga, Cecil Pelitiakta, Ogus Fiche, Dinocht, the Servish Pebbly, the Blint of Father, Ogus Nura Hurlame, Golua, or Anmajan Shah, Gowershe Vas Bime, Gohan Ronak. On behalf of Sinn Fein, Concordia, I wish to extend sympathy to the family and friends of Garrett Fitzgerald. I extend sympathy especially to the Taoiseach and to the Fine Gael party. As a Taoiseach, Cabinet Minister and long-serving Chuck Dalla, Garrett Fitzgerald played a very significant role in Irish politics in the 70s and 80s. Obviously Sinn Féin profoundly disagreed with him on key and fundamental issues, particularly around the issue of partition, and the role of the British government in Ireland, political censorship and the treatment of Republican prisoners. But these differences are widely known, and there is no need to dwell upon them this morning. His views were genuinely held, and he liked a good debate. We did agree on other issues, especially on social matters, and Garrett played a very positive role in seeking to set aside deeply conservative social legislation in this state, such as the, as the denial of the right to divorce. He was clearly and deeply committed to public life and public service and to citizenship, something which is widely recognised across the political spectrum and is to be commended. And he set a great example of the role that older people can play in public affairs and how we should respect and uphold their right to do so and shape our society so that we cherish and actually to promote the rights of our senior citizens. I believe that Garrett Fitzgerald would be pleased with that. The death of a public figure is always greeted by public comments and reflections. But the real loss is private and the real loss is personal. So to the Taoiseach, to Garrett's friends and colleagues in Fine Gael, I extend our commiserations and solidarity and to his family because aside from the public man there is the private person, the husband, the father, the Dajo, the Gar Dajo, the very personal figure that all of us uh, have within our own personal lives. So to especially to his friends and to his grandchildren, his great grandchildren and his uh, son and daughters, I extend our warmest and kindest solidarity, commiserations and condolences. Go jesh, je, goro, a anam. I'd like to call on uh, Deputy uh, Ross on behalf of the technical group. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Carla. Um, on behalf of the technical group, I'd like to join in the sympathy which... Thank you, especially to John and to Mark and to Mary. Uh, I should say that the first day that I was in the Shannon, Garrett Fitzgerald was Taoiseach, and he brought his constitutional crusade to the Shannon on that day, and that was the initial move. I think in a crusade which led to what we saw, the culmination which we saw uh, last night in Dublin Castle, and which we are now seeing all week. Gareth Fitzgerald, above anybody else, initiated the movement for tolerance, for an end to sectarianism, for non-violence, for equality, and for respect for minorities north and south in this country. He started that procedure in 1981, 
and he lighted a fire which, with various setbacks, uh, has actually climaxed this week. And in that sense, I think we should be very proud of him as a teacher who is responsible for what happened uh, in the last few days. Constitutional changes did follow, some controversial, but they had the common ingredient that they challenged the dominance of uh, great institutions in this country which needed to be challenged. He tackled those taboos which for so long had been the curse of Ireland, and he is responsible for that. On economic policy, perhaps he was not quite so successful. But he was above all, I think, a conviction politician. At a time of great cynicism in Irish politics, Gareth Fitzgerald followed his own convictions, often at, to his own cost. Indeed, his first government fell on a political conviction on which many would have given way, but he didn't to his cost. Indeed, he himself was prepared at one stage, and I think the part, Fine Gael party will be conscious of this, to take a hit in his own constituency where he nearly lost his seat in his effort to actually deliver two seats to the party. And uh, he, he, he didn't lose his seat, thankfully, but he was prepared to actually make that sacrifice and take that risk, a risk which many other politicians, for obvious reasons, wouldn't be prepared to take. Above all, I suppose, as the Taoiseach and the Leader of the Opposition and Deputy Adams have mentioned, he must be remembered for his contribution to Anglo-Irish relations. And indeed, the Anglo-Irish agreement, while again controversial in its time, was a great achievement in his own terms. His contribution to Anglo-Irish relations was not without setbacks. Indeed, he, uh, we heard this morning on the radio once again that very famous uh, 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 outburst from the British Prime Minister, uh, Margaret Thatcher, where she said, out, out, out. That was a major setback for his crusade for Anglo-Irish relations. But he took triumph and disaster fairly comfortably and treated those two impostors just the same. He was, above all, a person who wasn't subject to, uh, to knee-jerk reaction to political events. Uh, and indeed, he was, above all, a human being who wasn't uh, who wasn't uh, entranced or enchanted by the, uh, by, the, by the trappings of office. I think it was Conor Cruz O'Brien who said of him, he, Gareth Fitzgerald, indeed he was, uh, when he was writing about him, indeed he was a friend, and, uh, but an opponent in many, in many political spats, he said Gareth Fitzgerald was as nice a person as you can find in politics, but no nicer. Uh, what he meant by that was that he was a real human being, which is difficult to be in political terms, but he was also, he had around him a ring of steel, and he was prepared to take tough political decisions which were not in his own interests. But I think the general consensus around this House and, and the message which has gone out today is that Gareth Fitzgerald was above all uh, a human being, an intellectual, but with a huge, the important human side. And there are so many anecdotal stories of his devotion to his invalid wife, of him going home and cooking her lunch. There are so many stories about his own idiosyncrasies, indeed the one about him wearing two shoes at the wrong time is one which will live for a long time in the minds of many people who hold him in such great affection. But I think finally, the, the manner of his departure, the timing of his departure this week, is something about which he can personally, and many of us can be, in a, in a strange way, content, content about. Because he must have been, if he was aware of it, very happy to see that this week, the mission which he embarked upon so courageously in 1981 was almost completed. Thank you, Deputy. Um, I'd now like to call the Minister Rory Quinn. Uh, thank you, Account Corla. As the Senior Deputy for Dublin South East, I'd like to extend first and foremost my sympathy to the family, uh, my sympathy to the Fine Gael Party, 
and to tell the House that I first met Gareth Fitzgerald in the 1960s when he was a junior lecturer in the economics section and I was a probably fairly obnoxious architectural student in UCD. Uh, the first occupation of a university on this island took place in UCD on the grounds of the pursuit of excellence in that we were dissatisfied with the academic standards for which we had paid and the instruction which we were receiving and we confronted the university authorities uh, with the inadequacy of its own institution and he supported us in that particular struggle even though one of his family was intimately involved on the other side. Count Corley Gareth Fitzgerald was, as has been said, an intellectual and a politician, a feminist and a liberal, a European and an Irishman and it was my privilege to have served in government with him as I did with you sir and with other members of this cabinet. I loved him dearly and I regret his passing. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Mr. Lucinda Creed, please. Um, as a deputy for Dublin South East, perhaps not as senior as Minister Quinn, um, I want to join with my Taoiseach and with colleagues in extending my sincere sympathy and sorrow to the Fitzgerald family, to John, to Mark and to Mary and all of the extended family on their really, um, really sad loss. Um, Garrett inspired me as a very young person um, to become involved in politics, to take an interest in politics. His integrity, his very obvious sincerity and his unparalleled, in my opinion, deep belief in genuine public service um, convinced me that politics can be and is a noble profession. And if anybody personified high standards in high places, it was Dr. Garrett Fitzgerald. Uh, I recall in the not too distant past when I was coming under some pressure for comments I made, he took the time to approach me and to say to me, Lucinda, never ever waver, always follow your convictions, always stand up for what you believe in. And they are words that I will carry with me in political life uh, so long as I am a member of this house. I think three issues marked him out and some of them have already been alluded to. In relation to Northern Ireland, Dr Fitzgerald had vision and courage which marked him out from all of the rest. His foresight in making mainstream the concept of consensus and consent in Northern politics was inspired and it was visionary. His commitment to democracy as espoused uh, by the Anglo-Irish Agreement showed that he was most definitely ahead of his time. It took others many years to catch up with him. Unlike the many who did not subscribe to his view of consensus in the North, Dr Fitzgerald actually came from a family which was steeped in the Republican tradition, as, uh, Minister, as Deputy Martin has pointed out. Because of that, he knew and he genuinely understood the importance of consensus rather than division in politics on this island. I think the thing that really marked Dr Fitzgerald out for me was his commitment and his devotion to the European project. Not an unquestioning and not a blind commitment to the European project, but one that nonetheless was deeply supportive of the common European cause. I remember re meeting him during the Nice campaign, during the Lisbon campaign, uh, where despite his years, he was sprightly, he was energetic, he was enthusiastic and most importantly he brought young people with him in selling the European ideal uh, on this island. He also brought Fine Gael into the Christian Democratic family uh, with, with our partners in Europe and of that I particularly am deeply proud. His task of making Fine Gael the most professionally organised party on the island um, was certainly a goal which, which he fulfilled and achieved. He was much more than an academic. He knew Fine Gael, its branch structure, every corner of, of, of every constituency in an encyclopedic fashion and one which I think we can all, we can all learn from. Um, while Fine Gael today is very proud to have uh, such a strong uh, leader in, in Enda Kenny, I think we can all accept and acknowledge that Gareth Fitzgerald for us will always continue to be a spiritual leader for the party. I think the Fitzgerald family and the island of Ireland has lost a true and inspiring statesman, a genuine political leader and somebody that I was very, very proud to know and to call a friend. 
or yes, Jay, or I am Jeelish. Where am I going to end? Deputy Kevin Humphreys. Thank you, Count Cora. Can I just say today, Ireland has lost a great patriot. I was deeply saddened this morning when I heard in Morning Ireland that the former teacher of Gareth Fitzgerald uh, has passed away and I extend my sympathy on, on behalf of uh, Owen Murphy, who is away on government business today, uh, to his family and friends. Like many of the previous speakers, we, we spoke, our, we practised our, our, our trade in the shadow of a great politician and a great leader. His legacy lives on this week in the Queen's first state visit to Ireland, and I think it's a potent reminder that it was Garrett's political courage that in the Sunningdale and the Anglo-Irish Agreement. Uh, so I think it's, it's probably potent that it's the greatest success today he's remembered. He was always willing to engage in debate. He, was, he had a profound interest in the affairs of our country and the campaign, he campaigned at the European referendums and often led the debate domestically in the Irish Times column. Like many, I was amazed in February when he was there tallying the vote right up to the end. He enjoyed going and he said to me, he said, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Uh, he sat there and he tallied and he marked up the counts and he told, he told me at a very early stage, he says, he says, I'll be calling a deputy the next time I see him. Uh, and, and that was very important. And on the, the, the very first day, the 31st, the, sitting the 31st doll, he was up uh, with RTE, again, with his knowledge and the conversation he had with Dick Spring on the Pat Kenny show. You could see how enlivened he was by the whole democratic institutions. As I can say, today we did and we have lost a great patriot. I know the people in Dublin South East uh, will greatly miss him and, and deeply saddened. And I see, I think we should mention as well, former Deputy Joe Doyle, who was a very deep friend and colleague over the many years that he, he represented the area. So thank you for the opportunity and I hope his family in some way will be encouraged and get heart from the sentiments that have been expressed here today. Thank you.